All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Dr. Brittany McLeod. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your afternoon to attend the undergraduate research at UH webinar on creating research posters. Um, I know that some of you might be getting ready to um, submit for undergraduate research day, so I'll be talking about that a little bit as well today. Um, but if you are not thinking about undergraduate research day, I strongly encourage you to, if you've been doing research or if you are working on some now and you'd like to submit a poster, you can reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions, uh, but it's an opportunity that typically we only have once a year in partnership with the Honors College and at the library, uh, but we held it virtually in September. It was postponed from last April um, and it will be held this April and every April thereafter. Um, this is an opportunity for undergraduates from all disciplines at UH to present their research and creative works. And so you will be able to upload a poster. You can add a video link to accompany your poster where you talk about the research or go through a performance um, to be commented on. And every presenter's poster page um, or presentation page has a comment section where people can ask questions and you can engage um, with others about your work. Um, so to get started, um, I want to go over these really important dates for Undergraduate Research Day. The event itself will launch online at 10 a.m. on April 1st. Um, and so once that event goes online, it will be shared widely across the university and on social media. And we will have a social media tag that you'll be able to access um, people's posters and any highlights of presenters, um, mostly on uh, Instagram and Twitter, since that is where we are most um, active as an office. Um, in order to participate in Undergraduate Research Day, you do have to submit everything needed by March 1st. And so we understand that that is coming up pretty soon, um, but what you'll need to submit is your poster, a short, maybe 200 word abstract and your optional video. And that will need to be submitted by 11 p.m. Um, on March 1st. There are no revisions after March 1st um, for your posters unless I reach out to University of Houston Branding and they require that there are um, revisions to your posters. And we'll get into that here in a little bit as well. Um, Usually when we have this event in person, our office prints the posters um, at no cost to you and we provide them for the event and then you take them home, you use them at other conferences. Uh, but because this is a fully virtual event, we will not be printing posters, but I can talk to you about how to get your poster printed if you do need or want it printed for future conferences or events. Um, so we will go ahead and move into things to know about this next undergraduate research day. Like I said, fully virtual poster presentations, there's no live component. So there's not a set time that you have to be logged on um, to access anything or to present your work. You can request individually uh, a live link and I will happily create one so that you can uh, present at a specific time between classes or work or other obligations, but know that there's not a required live component to this event. So you can access it anytime, day or night, respond to emails and comments that you receive on your poster at times that work for you. We are using Forager One's symposium platform. It's what we used in the fall and it worked out beautifully it is a very simple, easy to use, um, and it's really nice to look at. They put a lot of thought into what an online symposium should look like, and it is specifically for undergraduate research. So that's why we really enjoy working with this platform. Uh, the posters, like I said, go live at 10 a.m. on April 1st, and they will remain live on that website for the remainder of the semester unless you specifically ask me to remove them after April 1st. There are some students who are concerned about um, their posters being shared widely beyond that day. Know that people can take a screenshot or save the PDF of your poster. And so if you have privacy concerns 
or your professor that you worked with on the project has concerns about sharing this so publicly, then definitely reach out to our office and we can discuss more. Um, the visitors to this event can be anybody at UH. You can share the link with family and friends, people at other universities, potential employers. Um, th th it really is endless. We had students last semester share on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and tagged on Instagram. And so these posters were viewed. I think we had more than 27,000 unique visitors to the event website in September. And so your posters will be viewed, they will be commented on. Every single poster had at least one comment in the fall semester. And so there were a lot of great conversations because of this virtual format for Undergraduate Research Day. And we anticipate the same this spring. Um, because you will not have an in-person audience, however, the key here is your poster has to tell your research story. So traditionally, whenever you are presenting a research poster at any conference, you'll be standing there next to it and people will be walking by. Some will stop and ask questions. Maybe it'll be one or two people at a time. Sometimes you'll get really lucky and have a huge group of people standing by your poster and you'll get to explain to everybody what that research project was like. But you have to think about in your poster, who is your audience? Who are you communicating this research to? It could be un other undergraduate students, grad students, professors, faculty. It might be family and friends coming to check it out as well. And so the language that you use and the way that you are communicating with others about your research project is what we're gonna focus on here today. We'll talk a little bit about what you need to do to format a poster. Um, I know that is a top question that we get, but I'm gonna spend a lot of time here talking about what needs to go in each section of your poster. So before you start working on a poster, before you download a template or start working on it at all, think about how you would explain your research to a friend or family member, somebody who doesn't have any experience with your project. How would you hold a casual conversation with them about it? You would obviously use some jargon from your discipline and from specifics of your project, but you would want it to be explained succinctly, but also thoroughly, if that makes sense. Um, you are going to be tackling a specific problem in your project, and so you need to identify that and figure out how you're going to word it on your poster in a way that is short and to the point. Um, and with your poster, every poster has a plan for success. Okay, so what does success look like for your project and how are you framing that out when you're getting to your discussion and results section of the poster? Um, think about what you've already accomplished in the project um, because the deadline is March 1st. I know that a lot of students are concerned about, well, that's in the middle of the semester. I do not have my project finished. How am I going to submit my project when I haven't finished everything? That's okay. Your poster really is meant to be a snapshot in time of where your research was at the time you submitted it. The point of having undergraduate research day, whether it's in person or online and showing your posters and standing there next to it, or in this case, having a comment section is to be able to elaborate on what you have done since submitting this poster. Where does your research stand now on undergraduate research day? So when you're creating your poster, you want to be really clear about what you've already accomplished and what the next steps are if you haven't finished the project in full. And so you'll go into that a little bit on your poster too. So whether you are interested in industry roles or graduate studies, when you finish up here at UH, you're going to be expected to communicate your research experience if you have it and the processes that you executed and the significance of both the research experience and the processes that you've learned how to execute when you're applying to positions or grad programs. So basically I say all of that to say, know why you're doing what you're doing and how it plays into your bigger goals. Know how to communicate your research experience and how you carried out a project to various audiences. You'll want to be able to convey the details of a project and assess its results um, because that's something that 
is going to be crucial no matter where you are whenever you graduate from here, whether you're in a position somewhere or pursuing research as a career, being able to discuss projects, results, and steps forward is a critical skill. When presenting your poster at any research event, you need to be prepared to discuss a few things. You're going to get questions in various forms about the results of your experiments, successful and unsuccessful approaches. And what I mean by this is, let's say your, um, your project, you only used approaches that were successful. You might be asked, well, what would an unsuccessful approach look like? And you need to be prepared to elaborate on that. If your project only um, resulted in unsuccessful um, results or your approaches didn't work out, you need to be prepared to discuss that in a way that you feel confident in discussing it. Um, and you need to be able to say, if I had done this instead, I would have had a better outcome. You need to be able to elaborate those types of things. Um, that is where you're able to talk about lessons learned during the project. If there were things that you would have done differently or that you would do next time, if there are things that were unexpected about your project that were helpful when you were wrapping up the project or designing some of the experiments, then you'll wanna discuss this as well. Towards the end of any project, you start identifying new research questions. After you have all of your data collected, analyzed, you've written everything up, um, you think, oh, well, this sparks some new questions for me. And, and that's what you'll wanna share with people who are commenting on your poster. They'll ask you, okay, as a result of this research, what's next? What do you think is on the horizon for your research going forward? And you'll need to be able to discuss those things with the people commenting. So right now I wanna get into creating the poster itself because this is where I get a lot of questions. Now, if you're creating a poster for any research event, know that some conferences will have templates that are required by their organization um, or they will have specific size guidelines um, that you'll have to follow. The same for Undergraduate Research Day um, here at UH. Um, we strongly encourage students to use a pre-approved template that's offered by our office um, and I will get you the link for that towards the end of this presentation. But these pre-approved templates have been approved by University of Houston branding team. And what this means is the logos, the colors are all set for you. So you don't have to go in and make changes to the logos. You don't need to change colors. Um, I know a lot of people really enjoy changing colors on posters and adding in new logos, but for the purpose of undergraduate research day, you really do want to stick to a simple, clean design that focuses on your research and the outcomes and the implications of your work. And so we'll get into um, a bit about those uh, templates here in a minute. And I also want to share some guidelines for if you are going to create your own template from scratch. So I will do that now. If you decide to create your own poster, and by this I mean you're not using a template from our office, your very best friend is going to be the UH branding guidelines. And I'm going to go ahead and stop this share so that I can pull up the other screen. Um, whenever you get to UH branding guidelines, this is going to be your very best friend in creating posters. Okay, here is their full website. And they go through, they have recently redone this website and it is fantastic. Um, if you look at their university logos section of the site, they discuss exactly how to use certain logos, um, the rules for them. You should not tilt or rotate them. They show proper usage. Um, you should not add like this shadow behind a logo. You should use them exactly as they are. Um, you should not alter colors or reverse the colors of these logos or combine them. And so you'll see a lot of students um, try to create 
a poster where they have this interlocking UH and then the main logo, what's called the primary logo, University of Houston, both on the poster. And so when I show you the templates here in a little bit, you'll see that we don't have two logos on any of them. UH branding actually prefers that there's only one logo on each poster. Um, so know that whenever you download these templates, they are exactly what branding is going to recommend. You don't want to add or change sizes of logos. So you see here, there are some examples of stretched out or narrow logos, and that's not what they recommend. Additionally, you don't want to add extra images close to the logos. There's actually a guideline that says, you know, the um, that around this primary logo, you have to be able to take the letter H and put it around any side of this logo and have space between the logo itself and any text or other images. So know that that is um, recommended as well to follow. You don't want to put logos on unreadable colors or type. So over text or over difficult colors. So just understand that there are some things to follow with where logos can be placed too. So if you choose one of the uh, templates and then make a patterned background, you're gonna have a harder time seeing not only the logos, but all the text as well. So keep that in mind whenever you're playing with the colors and the gradient, if you decide to use one on your PowerPoint um, in creating the poster. It goes through all of these um, logo spacing and interlocking UH uh, kind of guidelines, but I just wanted you to get a good sense of what is expected for logos. I'll go back to branding guidelines here. Um, I want you to know that these are the colors that UH branding recognizes for official and approved use. So all of the templates that you will see from our office are in these colors. And so whenever you're thinking about how to design the rest of your poster, this is where you can access uh, the names of the colors and certain numbers so that you can go in and pick and get the color exactly right to match what you're wanting to do. So if you have questions about colors and you need this link from me in, in, at any point in the semester when you're planning your posters, just let me know and I can send you the link too. Typography is not something that we are going to be enforcing, but some students like to have this information. Um, the League Gothic regular is the like big bold headline that UH uses. That's the font that they use. Um, it's open source, so you can download it from the UH download zone, and you can use it for your posters to create your header um, or the section headers in your poster. Um, you can also download the Milo font if you prefer. Um, you can use something else. Um, Crimson Regular is the font that a lot of people use uh, for the body of their poster, and it's accessible. Um, you can download it as well. I wouldn't use a font like this. It's a limited use display font, and it's also harder to read, so I just wouldn't use it. Um, they have some equivalent fonts that are in Microsoft Office packages that you can easily access. So if you can't download, for example, that Milo um, or League Gothic, you could use Impact or Trebuchet or Times New Roman instead. Um, if you need to download icons, a lot of students enjoy downloading these and adding them to the posters. You can get them from the download zone. They have them in black and white and you can make them the various colors as well. Um, and there are just some other tips here about layering text over photos. Like I said, if you need, well, we already covered that. Um, let's see, download zone. This is where you can get all the logos you could possibly need. So the issue that I run into personally, because I'm the person who does the initial review of all the posters for undergraduate research day, I first look at the logos. I will never change any text or colors of your poster. When you submit your poster, you actually agree to our office updating logos if needed. Um, and that's because sometimes students will go Google a logo 
and just download it and say, okay, this looks good. It's the color I want. Awesome. But the issue is sometimes the logos that you pull from Google don't match up with what's currently approved for usage by UH Branding. So regardless of what department or college your professor or you are working in um, for this poster, you can download the logo packages and it's usually a primary set, a secondary set, and in various colors. So red, black, white, gray, um, and you'll be able to download those to use on your poster. Keep in mind that the templates already have a UH logo on them. And so the only other logo that you might want to add might be a departmental logo. Um, or if you really prefer to keep it to the one logo, which is what branding prefers, uh, then you would just name your department under the title of the poster. And I'll go into that in a little bit as well. See, okay. So if you do decide to create your own poster and there are tips about this on our website, so please don't feel like this is the one and only time that you're gonna see this set of instructions. Um, I'll get you the link for that as well. You would open Microsoft PowerPoint. This is what most people do. Choose new blank presentation. For the slide layout, you don't want any titles or any text boxes on it. So you just pick a blank slide. And then under file, you would um, click on page setup and enter 40 inches for the width and 36 inches for height. Now this is critical, um, not only for digital display, but if you do want to have your poster printed, this is the width and height. These are the dimensions that are required for printing your poster at UH. And make sure that the slide is in landscape mode. So it's wider than it is high. If you are making your own, then you would add your own banner at the top and title and text boxes. You would then view the entire screen by selecting view, zoom, and fit to screen. And if you wanna zoom in, obviously, you know how to zoom in with the little plus minus zoom at the bottom right hand corner to any factor you like. If you do this and you have a blank poster page, you can cut and paste images, text blocks and charts onto the page. A lot of students will add charts and pictures into the middle or into the kind of method section of a poster. And then over in the results, you wanna be careful about adding too many charts or pictures onto your poster though. This is because when you go to print them, sometimes it doesn't come out exactly like you would like and it can be oversaturated um, and not just in terms of color, but just too many things happening at once on a page. Um, you know, whenever you want to add a text box to a poster, it's insert text box. Um, and start typing and you can adjust fonts as needed. Um, you can change the size. I would say having as large of a font as possible without it getting all bunched up on the poster is preferred so that people can read everything well. And like I said, just like adding a text box, you can add other objects. So pictures, diagrams, charts by using that insert menu. Um, everything, like I said, if you do decide to print your poster for any reason, know that whatever you insert, there may be some pixelation if you do that. So be careful about the sizing of the images that you're putting on your poster if you are going to print them at some point in time. Okay, so everybody is probably thinking, yep, that's nice. I know how to use PowerPoint. What needs to go on my poster? Um, so here is where at the top of the page, you'll have a poster title and that tells your audience exactly what the poster and research is about. And we think of it as kind of a mini abstract. It is very short to the point. What is this project about? What does it cover? Um, it should include appropriate keywords. And so I know that there are some conferences that have word or character limits on poster titles, undergraduate research date is not one of them, but it should still be brief and to the point. 
um, it should be something that can be located through a Google search if necessary. And it should also be the same as the title for the abstract. When you submit your poster for undergraduate research day, you include a 200 word abstract that describes the poster and the project. It's very brief, um, it's to the point, it talks about, okay, this is the purpose of the project, here is what I did, here were the methods, here's what I found, and here are the implications or why it's important. Um, and so that accompanies your poster. In this title portion of your poster, your font should be around 160 if you're using Arial narrow font, which is kind of one of the default settings for font on these posters. Um, some students will find that that is too large if they select different fonts or too small in others. So you just kind of have to play with it and make sure that it fits the way that you want it to um, once you've gotten the full title there. Beneath that, you need to have in smaller font your name and your contact information. I tell everyone to have their name and the email address that they prefer any viewers contact them at. So whenever people see this poster online, if they've got questions and maybe they don't feel like making a public comment and they can email you um, with this. Underneath your name will need to be your faculty mentor's name and department. So this is where you'll need to go to their department website and get the full official name of the department and their title to include. If you worked with multiple faculty and or grad students or other undergraduates on the on the project, you'll include their names here as well. Uh, and so this should be in font size about 90. Some people, like I said, it will be smaller, some larger, depending on the font that is selected. I know a lot of people go with Arial Narrow because it is nice, simple, clean, like some of the other fonts that we covered from the branding website. Um, and like I said, the University of Houston logo is embedded in the template, so you can't change it, you can't move it, you should not add extra logos anywhere. I know it's very tempting, you'll see the primary University of Houston up there on the banner and you'll want to add an interlocking UH or a departmental logo or something somewhere else. And I understand that temptation, I definitely do. The only um, kind of exception to this rule, I would say, is if you have received funding from an external organization. So if you're working on a research project that's funded by NSF or NIH, then you can include their logo at the bottom of your poster in your acknowledgments. And we'll talk about that section here in just a minute. So whenever you move down from the title section of your poster, names, contact information, usually in the upper left region of your poster is where you will have the motivation or background section or purpose. So this is where you'll provide a short paragraph about the problem or goal that your research addressed, why the problem is important, why is it interesting, why should people care as they're reading through, um, and why current solutions when you started the project were considered insufficient. So what was the purpose of doing this project? Why did you see that there was a need to be, or a gap to be filled, a need to be addressed with this project? And this is where you're gonna capture people's attention and get them to read the rest of your poster. Beneath that section is typically what's called techniques, approach, or methods. So this section is where you basically say what you did. So what are different approaches that could be taken to address the problem? What are the pros and cons to the approaches? And which um, options did you choose? And why did you choose them? Um, and then you'll talk about how exactly you did what you did. This portion of the poster exists so that if, if you take a break and walk away from your poster, or if you're not there physically to explain every part of your poster to someone, they can walk by or they can log on and see it. And they read this and say, okay, I know exactly how they carried out this project. 
I'm gonna go do this and try and replicate this their results. Um, and they should be able to do that based on your method section, based on all the factors that you describe. So you want to be very descriptive here in this section. Even though you have a small amount of space to accomplish that, you'll wanna go through step-by-step step how you conducted this research. Usually this is the point where everything shifts over to the right side of the poster or maybe in the middle of the poster. Some people have it formatted as two columns, some people have three, um, but this usually starts a new column itself. So analysis and results are often pulled together. Um, so experimental results would include performance graphs, tables, pictures, figures, diagrams, um, and this is what a lot of people call the heart of your poster. Um, it really could occupy more than half of the total space. I've seen um, a lot of posters where it will take up the full middle column um, if people have three columns on their poster. Or, you know, the middle column will be all analysis and then the start of the third column will be all results. Um, so. The format is going to depend on how you define discoveries specific to your discipline. And so there are going to be posters from business that are going to be look, looking very different from architecture or engineering or something in the social sciences. On the other hand, some social sciences are going to look very similar to humanities and business and might even have similarities in STEM discipline projects as well. So it's also in this section that you will describe a new method or a way to move forward from this research project. So as a result of this research, I have an idea for what we can do next. And that brings you to the final big section of your poster, which is referred to as the conclusion or implication section. Um, this is where you restate the problem or issue that you initially addressed in that background or motivation section, and then where you provide a summary of key findings. There will be some people who will look at your poster and say, okay, I have no idea what this analysis and results section means because this is not in my discipline. I don't understand it fully. So I'm gonna look at the conclusion and see what, what they say about the whole thing um, in terms that make sense to me. Um, and this is where people will look for your summary and explanation of, okay, what is it that this project means for this discipline? Or how do we address this problem going forward? And it's also where you can talk about next steps, whether you are going to continue the research further or you're encouraging other people to expand upon this research. So the acknowledgement section is the last part of the poster. It is very small at the bottom, usually in the right hand corner. And this is where you recognize people who helped you in this project. So it's often faculty mentors and research teams. I don't know. Okay. Are we supposed to be looking logo screen? Let me see what's going on. Okay, we should be good here on the PowerPoint. Let me know if you can't see it. Okay, sweet. All right, so the acknowledgement section is, like I said, the smaller portion, usually in the bottom right-hand corner, where you talk about the people that supported you in this research you almost always name the faculty mentor that guided you and your research team. You always, always, always identify funding sources. So I mentioned earlier, some people are funded by NSF or NIH. There are a lot of students who present who are funded through our office in a summer undergraduate research fellowship, a provost undergraduate research scholarship, maybe the Action Research and Communities Program or Mellon Research Scholars Program. Um, there are a couple of summer programs like the Ferris Fellowship Program, UHAND, or the BCM SMART program. 
that provided funds and supported students through some research projects. So if you received any level of funding from any organization to pursue your research that you're presenting on your poster, you absolutely have to include them. It is a professional courtesy to include them in your acknowledgement section. Um, any other acknowledgements, if there were family or friends who really helped you, just supported you while you were doing the research, it's also okay to include them here. Some people like to include a references section, but the font is going to be very, very small in this part because you might have so many references that you have to have a tiny font to get it to fit there. But it's nice to have if you um, do any kind of in-text citation on your poster. So at the end of the day, your poster should be created collaboratively with your faculty mentor and other members of your research team if you have them. If this is an independent research poster that's maybe an assignment for a class or your faculty mentor is just giving you full control of what the poster includes, then at the end of the day, you want somebody who gives a final approval on it. It's usually a professor that is named on the poster with you. It should be fun to create. I know I'm going through a lot of guidelines, a lot of things that you have to do to make the poster come out to where it's gonna get approved. But that's why we took a lot of the guesswork with colors and logos out of the equation by creating these templates um, with UH branding. And that's also why we have these workshops to address your questions that you might have. So that way you can go into this feeling confident about your ability to create a poster that you feel good about, that you're ready to share with people. Um, the posters should also be applicable to many disciplines. I know that your projects will be very focused in your area or maybe interdisciplinary with one or two others, um, but you want to be able to communicate to people in other disciplines why your research matters. It's not necessarily telling people in other disciplines, hey, you should do this research. It's communicating to them why this research should matter to everyone. Um, and it should encourage interactive discussion within not just the entire UH community, like this slide says, but anybody who views this poster. You should be engaged in conversation with them about the research and future implications and where research should be going in this area that you're focused on. So for interesting and easy to digest posters, and I talked about this a little earlier, you know, using illustrations and photos is great but just be mindful of how many you're using and the sizing of them. Um, the same with tables and figures. You wanna be mindful of sizing, how many you're putting on there, but know that there are some people who will click on your poster just because they saw on the thumbnail on the website, um, a really intriguing graph or picture, and that will draw them in and make them want to read the whole thing. Um, use different colors, but like I said earlier, just be mindful of how those colors might clash with backgrounds. I had somebody submit a poster last year that had a black, gray, and white gradient background and then a yellow font. And so when it got into that gray and white part of the gradient, um, the yellow font did not show up. And so we had to do a full overhaul of the background, the font color choice, logo color choice, um, and I also had someone who did a gradient of purple to blue. And again, the font color was black and white and in certain spots it showed up and others it didn't. So just be mindful again of that simple, clean design, easy to, to read and something that's accessible to anyone who's looking at it. And when I talk about accessibility, I mean large fonts that are clear, using bulleted phrases rather than paragraphs. I think one of the only places you should be using paragraphs would be in that like background or motivation area. Uh, and then everything else should be shorter phrases or bullet points to get your points across about methods and results and future implications. Um, for undergraduate research day, I do encourage students to submit a three to five minute video. Uh, students can record either directly in YouTube or on their laptop or phone and upload to YouTube and then grab the link for that and submit it at the same time that they're submitting their poster. So the form to submit your poster for undergraduate research day 
when you scroll all the way to the bottom and add your poster, um, upload it as a PDF, there's an additional space where you can add a link from YouTube and that video is embedded there next to your poster. And so in this video, you can describe the research project, what's on the poster, um, things that maybe aren't on the poster, but you want people to know. And that's really nice to have so people can view your poster and get extra context directly from you in a video. Our office does watch all of the videos that are submitted to make sure that they are appropriate, use appropriate language, that people are dressed appropriately. And so just be mindful that we hold everyone to a high standard of professional behavior um, and all of that whenever we're doing undergraduate research day. So submitting your poster, there used to be a lot of steps to this, but at this point, it's just uh.edu slash UR day for undergraduate research day. I'm going to switch the sharing over to this screen now so that you can see the undergraduate research day website. So this right now has our save the date um, and you click on it and it brings you to the symposium website. Um, so this is where you would have the main presenter information level, major, PeopleSoft ID, um, program affiliation, if you're in any of these. If you are not, then you can, uh, then this is just an optional field, so you don't have to select one. If you're funded by any external um, organization, this is where you could add this. And you can add up to seven additional presenters. And when I'm looking for presenters here, I don't mean faculty or grad students, I mean undergraduate presenters. That's where you'll put their information. You'll add the title and an abstract and it's a maximum of 250 words. Um, and then you will select the subject. So I tried to include every department at UH um, so that every student can feel like they are being recognized in this. And you can filter the submissions through here. You can add a PDF of your poster or a video if you're adding a creative work, um, like a performance or a demonstration. And then the voiceover video link is where you would add your YouTube link. And they provide some great um, instructions, some tips for creating videos and adding them to YouTube, uploading videos that happen to be longer, um, and then making those videos unlisted. And when they say unlisted, it's just like, it's not gonna pull up in a Google search, but anybody with the link will be able to view it. Um, so that's how you submit. Also here on this Undergraduate Research Day website for an, within our office, you can scroll down and learn a little bit more about the event. And you can access the booklet from last year, learn about the format and the people who were presenting. Um, and then this is where you can access the poster templates. And I'm going to grab this link really quick and add it in the chat because I know people will probably be looking for this. Okay, so these are all PDF. So what you would do is download them, um, save as a PDF, and then convert to a PowerPoint. Um, so I just save them as PDF to, I guess, downloads works. Um, and then whenever I open it up, I save it, convert it to a PowerPoint, and it opens as that new document for me. So I wish that these opened in new tabs so I didn't have to do it like this. But I just want to give you a good um, idea of what we're working with as far as these templates. They're all going to have this white background, which is where you will put your text and any charts. Um, it's plenty of space for you to work with. Um, and they have a banner at the top. They're not all this primary um, logo at the top. Some of them do have um, the primary red and, and gray. Some of them have the interlocking over here. And this is where it gets tempting to add an extra um, logo over in the right-hand corner. 
Um, but UH Branding prefers that we just have the one University of Houston logo on these. So please do not add additional logos unless they are from a granting organization like NSF, Humana, NIH, um, or if you partnered with another university on a project, then you could include their logo up here as well. And I'm happy to work with you one-on-one -on -one with that. This is also where, like I said, the instructions for creating your very own and not using one of these templates are right here. So if you find yourself frustrated with the um, templates that are provided and you want more freedom with the colors, know that you can create your own. And we have provided the uh, full list of directions to do that in PowerPoint. Um, and also the link to the UH download zone so that you can download university logos. Um, know that anytime you have a poster with a UH logo on it, you have to get university branding approval. Um, and to do that, you would email branding at central.uh.edu. If you, if you prefer, I can also go and get that approval for you after you submit it. That's something that I'm used to doing. I'm happy to do it. Um, but I'm the point of contact should you have questions after today about these posters. Okay, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint so we can wrap up. Okay. All right, so like I said a second ago with preparing a video to include typically three to five minutes is what we are looking for on these for undergraduate research day. After looking at all the videos that were submitted for the fall event students most often talked about the introduction of the problem. Um, methods used quick rundown of the results or assessment um, and next steps for the project because some students don't have their projects completed by the time they submit. So they talk about things that they are working on next to finish the project or expand into a future project. And I personally love when students talk about what was fun or interesting about doing the project. Your poster does a lot of work for as far as talking about methods, results, next steps, but your poster doesn't have an opportunity or space for you to talk about what you enjoyed about doing this research project. And so having a video to accompany it is a great opportunity for your personality to come out, for you to show um, any viewers why this poster was so much fun for you, what you got out of the experience, what you hope to do in the future because of this research. It's something that I encourage you to include as part of your video. Um, and if you have questions about what exactly can be included, again, you can reach out to me and I'm happy to address any questions. Like I mentioned earlier, if you are doing a video dress professionally, we tend to encourage people to wear their cougar red and use professional language. Um, because like I mentioned also earlier, everyone can view these posters and videos. Anyone who has access to the link to this event and the link is shared widely across the university of tens of thousands of people. Um, and then there are some people who share with companies and on LinkedIn, on Twitter. And I don't say this to scare you. I say this to encourage you to participate and to know that your poster and your research will be shared widely. And so you will have an opportunity to have this impact that you're looking for. So you definitely want to feel like you represent yourself and the University of Houston appropriately when you do these videos to accompany your poster. As we are wrapping up, I wanna talk about some upcoming deadlines um, not just undergraduate research day, which the deadline is March 1st to submit those things, but also March 12th is the Friday before spring break. So I know we're all looking forward to that, but it's also the deadline for the 2021 Houston Early Research Experience or the HERE program. Um, the application is due that day and the 2021 Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship the SURF program application is due then. If you have questions about either of those programs, you can email me and I will add my email um, in the chat so that you can reach out to me. 
Okay. And um, just a quick rundown of these programs here and surf are both available. If you are a freshman right now, but will be a sophomore in the fall, if you'll be a junior in the fall or you'll be a senior this fall, you can apply to both of these programs. Um, here is more of an introduction to research. So maybe you don't have as much experience or you're just trying to figure out where you want to go with research. Um, it's a two week intensive intro to research in the month of August. So the first two weeks of August every day from about 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. or so, um, you and 49 other students will come together and be uh, put into groups based on discipline and assigned a faculty mentor by our office. And each of these groups addresses from their disciplines viewpoint uh, a specific theme and issues in that theme. And this year's theme is inequality in Houston. So if you are interested in the HERE program, please feel free to reach out and I will direct you to Dr. Ricky Bettinger and she can help you with the HERE program questions. SURF is also available um, for students this summer. I have a lot of people who ask, will this be in person or remote? The answer is whatever you want it to be. So the weekly lecture series that we do as a formal part of SURF will be done virtually, just like we did last summer. So every Wednesday at noon, we'll come together with faculty and staff presenting on various topics um, to help you in your research journey. And those will be done virtually. They will be recorded and added to a page for you to access as the summer goes on. Um, but your specific research project with SURF, um, it can be in person if the faculty mentor that you choose allows it to be in person and if you feel comfortable with it being in person. That being said, everyone who applies to SURF also submits a remote research plan that describes how they will carry their project out remotely if they choose to do it remotely or if they end up not having access to campus. So last summer, most of the students did all their projects remotely. A few people came to campus to collect and analyze data and maybe one or two students were on campus able to work on their research because the lab or office they were in was so small and they did, they deemed that it was safe to do so with social distancing, hand washing and mask wearing. Um, so know that the SURF deadline and HERE deadlines are both March 12th. Again, you can contact me with questions. A little bit further out and if you are going to be a junior or senior this fall, you can apply to the Provost Undergraduate Research Scholarship or the PERS. Um, this, like the SURF program, requires that you identify a faculty mentor and write a 500 word research proposal in order to apply. Both of these also require a letter of recommendation from that faculty mentor that you're gonna work with. So if you have questions about any of these, my email address is in the chat. I'm happy to answer them. You can also schedule appointments with me using the Navigate student app. I don't have any availability this week, but I do next week and of course for the rest of the semester. So if you think of questions or if you have any concerns as you're starting to prepare for undergraduate research day or maybe applying to SURF, PERS or the HERE program, I am the person that you can contact. I know that's a lot of information and we have technically one minute left, but if anybody has questions, now would be the time for those. 